Hello. Today we are going to be reading and highlighting Lesson 2 of Unit 3, Water on Earth. Take out your student reader and open up to page 18 or scroll down to page 18 in your online version of the student reader so we can begin with our highlighting. Weather and Climate The Gulf Stream In the 1700s, there were no telephones. People who wanted to communicate with people overseas had to send letters on ocean vessels. Because of this, Benjamin Franklin was very interested in ocean currents. Franklin was curious about one current that flowed eastward from the Gulf of Mexico around the southern tip of Florida and along the east coast up to Iceland and Norway. This is the Gulf Stream. Franklin was the first person to chart its movement. On several trips across the ocean, Franklin took the temperature of the water as he crossed over it. He found that the Gulf Stream is like a warm river that moves through the colder waters of the Atlantic Ocean. He realized the Gulf Stream could speed up the travel time of boats sailing between America and England. They would have to stay in the current when they traveled east and avoid it when they traveled west. Earth's Climates in addition to helping boats sail the ocean more quickly, ocean currents have another important function. They transfer heat around the planet. This is important because Earth's surface is not heated evenly. Remember that Earth is a sphere. Around its middles, the sun's rays shine directly onto the planet. This middle point is called the equator. The equator is the imaginary line that runs around the widest part of Earth. It is halfway between the North Pole and the South Pole. This region around the equator is the tropical climate zone. The sun's rays are the most concentrated here, which causes temperatures to be high. The sun's rays spread out over a larger area when you move north or south of the equator. This causes Earth's surface north and south of the equator to receive less direct heat from the sun. As a result, these regions have lower temperatures. Oceans transport heat. Earth's land, oceans, and atmosphere all absorb heat from the sun, but the oceans absorb the most. This means the tropical waters around the equator absorb the most heat. As the ocean absorbs sunlight, its surface warms. With enough heat, the water moves into the atmosphere as water vapor. Evaporation increases the temperature and humidity of the surrounding air. This then causes rain and storms that are carried by winds around the planet. The water cycle is very influenced by these interactions between the atmosphere and the ocean. In fact, the ocean is the primary source of the water cycle. 78% of, of all rain falls into the ocean and 86% of all water evaporation comes from the ocean. Ocean currents also carry warm water and precipitation from the equator toward the North and South Poles. They carry cold water from the poles back to the tropical region. Oceans influence climate. As they absorb heat and transfer it and water and transfer it and water around the planet, ocean in oceans influence weather Earth's weather and climate. Weather refers to the conditions of the atmosphere, temperature, humidity, wind speed, air pressure, and precipitation in a, lar in a pl particular place at a particular time. Climate is the average weather over a span of 30 years. Weather changes hour to hour, minute to minute. Climate changes over very long periods of time. How close a region is to the equator affects its climate. So does its nearness to the ocean and its elevation. Because tropical regions receive the most direct sunlight, they also experience the most rainfall. This rainfall is mostly over the oceans. They also tend to have a wetter and warmer climate. Regions that are at higher elevations and are farther away from oceans and farther away from the equator tend to be cooler and drier. How Hurricanes Form As oceans interact with the atmosphere, they cause weather events. For example, a hurricane is a storm system with strong thunderstorms and sustained winds of 119 
to more than 252 kilometers per hour. Hurricanes form when ocean water is hot enough to quickly evaporate into water vapor and condense into large clouds. Because of this, hurricanes always begin over warm ocean water near the equator. Hurricanes are then moved by global winds called trade winds that push them from east to west. And you can see here an example of what would be considered a cyclone or a typhoon versus a hurricane. Hurricanes begin when evaporation makes the air above the ocean humid and warm. Humidity is a measure of the amount of water vapor in the air compared to how much water vapor the air can hold. A 0% relative humidity means that there is no water vapor in the air. When relative humidity is 100%, the atmosphere is full of water vapor. Some is released as precipitation. As evaporation makes the air warmer, that warmer air rises in the atmosphere. At the same time, cold air sinks, creating wind. Winds coming together force air upwards. As humid air rises, it creates clouds. Winds come from outside the hurricane push the storm from east to west. Hurricanes can grow more than 800 kilometers wide with winds more than 252 kilometers per hour. They grow stronger when there is warm, moist air. When a hurricane reaches land or cooler water, it weakens because it has no more water or heat to fuel its growth. Hurricanes and people. Hurricanes can impact living things. The heavy rains can cause flooding. The strong winds can uproot trees and sometimes even buildings. Because of this, scientists have developed tools to predict the strength of hurricanes and the path they are most likely to travel. For example, scientists know that hurricane activity is greatest in late summer. This is when the difference between air temperatures and the sea surface temperatures is the greatest. In the Atlantic Ocean, hurricane season generally runs from June 1st to November 30th. However, late August and all of September are the most active hurricane months. Scientists use the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale to categorize hurricanes. This scale describes how much damage a hurricane might cause as it develops. The scale classifies hurricanes by wind speed. It goes from a dangerous category one to a destructive category five. Category five hurricanes only form about once a year. I do need you to make sure you star this diagram and chart so that you have it ready for your next lab activity. And that is the end of lesson two. Don't forget to finish highlighting and I'll catch you in the next video.